Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen PTU patch notes, this time for the PTU Alpha 3.1.0 L. There are some new features with this patch. AI pilots interdicting players now carry interdiction dampening devices. Those ships must be destroyed before the player can now quantum travel away and will be marked and obvious. Players will have a HUD indication for this quantum suppression. There's been some feature updates as well. The character customizer now includes preview icons. Own target are now default screens on the Cutlass MFDs. The constellation should now have collision in the tail section and the turret should no longer have a duplicate UI. The Cartu Al should have an internal atmosphere when in landing mode. The Star Marine HUD should no longer be missing elements. They've adjusted scalp color to match hair strands for a character customizer. Players should no longer be able to get stuck on top of the Terrapin's bed. The claw of the Reclaimer now has shields and takes damage. FPS radars should now immediately remove players when they die. Debris should now correctly move after ship destruction. Cyclones should no longer consistently point upward after destruction. The top turret of the Reclaimer should now have interaction points. Seats should now rotate with the ship with the VMA, the Vehicle Manager app. Players should now properly interact with the sticks of the remote turret on the Reclaimer and the console should no longer clip into the station. Player versus player game modes should now function again correctly in Arena Commander. Billowing dust from the Reclaimer when near a surface should no longer appear to flicker and flash. Star Marine loadouts on the customizer should now properly have persistent universe items. The Reclaimer should no longer spawn in the damaged slash alert state when active. The player should no longer be able to fall through the Reclaimer and become permanently locked inside the airlock. Pip reticles should no longer occasionally change to wait and get stuck on the UI. There should no longer be a short delay after reloading or checking the mag before the players can sprint. Players should now be able to spawn dragonflies at the Levski garage. The escape pod room floor of the Reclaimer should no longer be missing its collision. The Cutlass should now no longer tilt to the side as it's flown forward. FPS damage direction indicators should now display correctly in EVA when within ship physics grids. The inner door on the front of the elevator of the Reclaimer should now open properly upon ship entry. The side airlocks of the Reclaimer should now have open and close audio. It should no longer be possible to get stuck floating at the entrance of the prospector. The selected ship should now load into the customizer when that option is selected from the game lobby. The reclaimer's entrance interactions should now be easier to find from EVA. The glaive and the scythe should no longer float off the landing pads at spawn. AI chatter should no longer cut off mid-sentence. Star Marine armor sets should no longer duplicate in the player's inventory at each login. The sniper rifle scope should no longer be attachable to the P8SC. The Reclaimer cargo hold should now have atmosphere and gravity correctly. Available slash cancelled beacons should now refresh automatically. Vehicles spawned in the hangar should no longer be inside of the hangar floor. Players should now be able to equip a spare weapon mag on the Odyssey flight suits. The Nox should no longer rest on its side after being spawned. They have fixed a lot of client and server side crashes, 18 plus crashes apparently. They've also done performance tweaks for memory usage near planets. They fixed performance reduction near moons. There's further performance updates for server bottlenecking, performance tweaks related to asteroid physics as well. However, the 414 issues and IFCS fixes are still pending. The testing focus for this patch was service beacons and server stress testing and the reclaimer and the terrapin as well. So this patch is a massive improvement over some of the previous PTU patches. Performance is up and crash wise, they still happen, um, but they haven't really happened to me. I've only read about crashes now, like there's some sort of myth. But I, I know they happen to some people regularly still. It's to do with hardware, it's to do with software, it's to do with the alpha nature of the game. However, I have had a great performance uh, with this latest patch um, frame rate wise crash wise it's all been pretty awesome for me however there is still a huge amount of ram and gpu memory usage and occasionally graphical glitches i do think i do very well because i've got some obviously i got an optane drive so that seems to work with star citizen very well when it comes to loading and uh, a lot of those issues the reclaimer works really well now both spawning it in and flying it moons don't cause the performance issues like they did in the last patch either this is the best most stable patch i have ever tried since 2.6.3 
Uh, even on my laptop, actually, which is an i7 6700 uh, with a 1060 uh, NVIDIA card in, uh, I have pretty good frames, 25 to 40 frames, in fact. I did occasionally get hitching one on my laptop, but not even nearly as bad as I did in the early PTU. Missions and gameplay is significantly more accessible and playable. Interdiction is a bit too common still for me, but in quite a cool way, you'll have to destroy one of those ships that's interdicting you now, the one that's generating that dampening field. So escorts are going to matter. Trade and cargo matter is going to change quite significantly. Service beacons are actually useful. When you get interdicted, you're going to have to take out one of those ships, the one that's dampening you, otherwise you can't get away. And that's why you want escorts. That's why um, fighters are going to be a lot more useful uh, at making money now. And obviously with service beacons there, allowing you to make money from other players, being able to charge for services, being able to have emergency request um, services, which you're probably going to have to put a reasonably high price on um, if you are requesting an emergency service. Like, please get to me quickly. They have made awesome progress in this L patch, and it looks like they could make their deadline now for a live build at the end of this week without making too many concessions, but we'll have to wait and see. For me, I don't mind them doing an extra week's worth of work if they have to push it to to next week that would be fine with me however they do seem to come hell or high water try and get it out this week to a live build but as i said we'll have to wait and see every month we give away a ship for march it's the outpost building pioneer donated by our featured org this time forgotten heralds a pmc with a history grounded in ue military service their doctrine focuses on operational agility through custom in-game training that they do regularly with their friendly active community you can check out their org and discord below to see if you're a fit for them please check them out they are awesome peoples but to be in for a chance of winning that pioneer make sure you're subscribed to my youtube channel and then comment on any of my stars that some videos made throughout the month. Every video gives you another chance to win. Do you have any questions about Star Citizen or Squadron 42's development or gameplay mechanics or anything we discussed in this patch notes reading or feedback or suggestions for videos, whatever, chuck them in the comments below. A special thank you to my Patreons who allow me to create the amount of content I do. If you're interested in becoming one of them, you can find the links to Patreon as well as everything else we've talked about down below too. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me and I'll see you in the verse.